If you want to understand what a Jalco is, what the kind of types are, how they work, then this is the video for you. I have another video about how to use them. So look out for that one. So what are Jalcos or IV cannulas or whatever kind of word you want to use? They are needles that we use to um, put up a, a IV line, right? So we can inject fluids or medications or whatever the case um, into your vein. So we get different colors and different sizes. So every color represents a different sign. Please don't go on the fact that a specific color is a specific size because not every country and not every brand is going to use the same sizing. So we can't trust that the color means what it is, right? These ivy cannulas are measured in a gauge. So the smaller the number, the bigger the needle. So the biggest that you'll probably see on an ambulance is a 14 gauge. You do get bigger than that, but that is the biggest needle that we carry. And the 22 gauge is the smallest needle that we carry. So a baby or a child would get very small ones. And I can see these aren't even in, in line probably, right? So a child or a baby would get a very small one and an adult would get a bigger one, right? Often you'll hear the conversation about, well, if we're only wanting to give some medication, you know, so let's say we're wanting to give something for nausea and we're wanting to give it IV, then we might just put up, you know, something small like a 20 gauge. Or let's say that we have a trauma patient and we want to give like blood products and tons of like fluids because we are wanting to fluid resus, then we need to put up the biggest. I would argue that mindset um, and say rather than choosing the needle for what we're wanting to do, we actually need to choose the needle for the size of the vein that we find. If you have a very small vein, you have to put in a very small needle. If you're doing an external jugular and you put in a 22 gauge, you would be completely wasting what could be have placed into that vein. So it's kind of like putting a small needle into a big vein is inappropriate in the same way you wouldn't put a, a 14 gauge into you know someone's hand because it's too big for the purpose. It's not fit for purpose. Rather than going, we need to give fluids, let's grab a big vein. Sorry, let's grab a big ivy cannula. We should go, we have a big vein. We do need to give fluids, so let's go for a big vein. Let's get a big IV cannula. How do we tell really what's going on? So like I said, the smaller the number, the bigger the cannula, and the bigger the number, the smaller the cannula. But what's really important is that each one actually has a flow rate on it. I did the maths, right? Each of this one here. So I see this says it can give 333 mils per minute. This one says it can give um, 96 mils per minute, and this one says that it can give 22 mils per minute. So I calculated that a 14 gauge would be able to administer a liter of saline in under three minutes. So in less than three minutes, an IV line that is that big, or if this is placed into your IV, or into your vein, what am I saying? Uh, you can administer a liter of saline in under three minutes, all right? The 18 gauge can administer the same amount of fluid in 10 minutes. So this is three times the size as that. Just out of interest, this does the liter in five minutes. So that's three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 16 minutes, so not a big jump, 27 minutes and 45 minutes. So this does three minutes, that does 45 minutes. So when we are considering which IV Canada to use, we should consider one, how big the vein is, right? If you put a IV cannula that is too small into a very big vein, you actually have a pretty good chance of popping it. If you put a very big IV cannula into a small vein, you also have a really good chance of popping it. So we need to find the appropriate needle for the vein rather than the other way around, right? We shouldn't be going, well, we need to put up a big one, so we're gonna put a big one into the hand. Uh, that's not quite the way to go. Because we all have big veins, right? Um, because our hands have small veins and then as we go up the arm, the arm veins get bigger and then we get into like something like an external jugular. We all have big external jugulars, right? So you wouldn't put a small gauge into an external jug. My favorite out of interest is the 16. Um, I just feel like it works well. You know, it's the in between, it's not as big. And so yeah, let me open up the two on the opposite sides and I'll show you something. So you might go, James, they don't look very different, right? They're the same length. What are you going on about? Not much to talk about here. Well, that's because there is this protector on it. As you can see, 
there is a huge difference, right? As we can see, there's a huge fluid difference. This one can put a liter in 45 minutes. This puts a liter in less than three minutes. Huge difference, right? So how does these things work? There's these little wings here that we can flatten. And then what happens is that there is a plastic cannula over the needle. So we stick this into the vein, we lower it down, we push it in a little bit more, and we then advance this plastic sheath into the vein. And then the needle comes out and then this is our sharp that we want to be careful about. And we then throw that away. I'm not gonna throw it away for you now, but if you look here, don't know how close I can get you here. So as you can see, there's this plastic cannula. So this is what actually sits in your vein. There's no metal in your vein once we take that out. This is what sits in your vein. So blood and whatever drugs and medication can travel both ways through this. Um, so we can withdraw fluids or I guess blood if you were needing to do for whatever reason. Um, and you can inject blood and fluids into that, right? So this doesn't actually do any harm. It's plastic. It's fine in the arm. This then gets thrown away. And as you can see, it's like a really big needle. And on, and on the end of it, because this is a safety needle, there is a safety pin. So I can't prick myself, you see? I would be getting stabbed if I did this because it's very, very sharp, but I'm not. So just because I've played with these enough, I know how to open them up again. Don't do that. So a couple of things to, to just be very aware of when you are doing this skill. Once you're in the vein and you have advanced this, and now let's say it gets stuck and you want to now change your position, never, and I repeat, never, push the metal needle back in through the cannula. You might go, but James, why? I don't see the problem. Where's the problem? Because if the cannula is bent at all, the needle will go straight through and cause an ambular. So this little plastic thing can break off and start traveling in the body and cause an embus, an embus, an embuli. So that'll travel around you, land up in your heart or probably your lungs and probably kill you. If you're pulling the needle out and you wanna now put it back in, you don't. You completely remove the needle, right? And you throw the needle away. You do not advance the needle back through the cannula. This is the tiny one. So. At the back here, you just have this little thing at the top here, which then can come off. Uh, that can be kept for later. I'll show you why. And then blood will still not come out the back. And then there's also this port at the top of this. This is where you can inject medication. So I'll grab the bigger ones. You can open this up and you can inject fluid into that. So what people do or, and what can be done is you can take this little piece of plastic and after the ivory line is in, you can close it up with that. So now obviously there's no blood coming out the back but you can stick a syringe onto the top and you can inject medications. Like I said, let's say we were wanting to give something for nausea. We could inject it um, straight through there. It's a one-way valve, nothing comes out, things only go in. Um, so it's really useful to use something like that. And then if you are then needing to then put on something, you can just, or like if you want to administer some fluids, you just open up the back there and you can then apply your saline or whatever fluid you're giving to the back. The other way you can do this is that you can actually attach a three-way stopcock. So that's those, you know, three valves that you can then control which direction the fluid's going. Um, if you want to see a cool video about that, I'm going to make one. I'll put the link down here. That is pretty much the IV cannula. Like I said, smaller the number, bigger the needle. Bigger the number, smaller the needle. These are the, the gauge. Uh, smallest that we carry is a 24. The biggest we carry is a 14. Like I said, um, it's important to understand the equipment we have. Um, I take everything apart if they bring something new, because sometimes they bring a new cannula, you know, or a new this or a new that. Open it, take it apart, play with it, um, get really, really familiar with it so that you understand each bit and piece and plug and hole and valve and everything, because that's what makes you excellent. So guys, best of luck. If you really enjoyed this, um, check out this video because I think that you would enjoy that too.